today's movie is The Tenth Victim, the 1965 science fiction film directed by Elio Petrie based on a short story by Robert Sheckley. The film stars Ursula Andress and Marcello Mastroianni. In a future where murder is legalised, contestants take part in the big hunt for fame and fortune. The contestant who survives ten hunts, alternately as hunter and victim, stands to win a million dollars and other great prizes. Jaded hunter Caroline has just been assigned her tenth victim and is offered a lucrative contract if she can kill him as part of an advertising campaign for Ming T. But her victim, Marcello, is suspicious and things are further complicated by the suggestion of romantic feelings developing between them. But is this just another part of the game? The Tenth Victim is a funny, clever and staggeringly stylish film that you can just enjoy on the level of an entertaining sci-fi romp if you want to. And there is certainly plenty to enjoy on this level, from the clothes, the set design, the sunglasses, and you have never seen more fabulous sunglasses in a film than you will hear, to the incredibly beautiful lead actors. But if you're looking for more substance, I think this film has that too under the surface. Like Barbarella, this film explores a future in which war has been abolished, but unlike Barbarella, where the prevailing value is love, here, mankind's impulse towards murder, towards violence, have been channeled into a game. And that game is legalised murder. The result of this, ironically, is the normalisation of sadism and the fostering of a kind of emotional detachment both between people and in people from their own emotions. This society has tried to channel away difficult emotions like anger and sadness through rituals, through the ritualized game, and also through drugs. But at its heart, this society is cold and empty. Caroline and Marcello are both really isolated and melancholy figures. Neither of them ever seems to be content or happy. Behind the fabulous clothes and amazing sunglasses, there is a deeply melancholy emptiness to these characters. Marcello is pursued by his vengeful ex-wife and his unhappy girlfriend who wants a commitment from him that he just can't give her. His only friend is a weird robotic toy. Caroline runs literally from one murder to the next, but seems to take no joy in any of it. In this context, and in the context of people who are competing to murder each other for money, it seems that the greatest risk of all is in real emotional attachment and connection. The dance that Caroline and Marcello play with each other and with the viewer keeps us guessing whether the romance is real or just another sexy ruse to achieve a kill. The problem is that neither of them know either. And the film's somewhat protracted final act really shows their difficulty in working through this. Now, I love The Tenth Victim, but... If I have one qualm with it, it's that it brings in this uh, very old-fashioned trope that all women want is to trap men into marriage. The character of Marcella's mistress is constantly trying to get him to marry her, and then in the final stages of the film, Caroline is also doing the same thing. And in this futuristic film that's exploring how man's values have changed, it just sits really oddly. Perhaps what the filmmakers were trying to suggest is that the characters want to return to a more traditional kind of human relationships, but if this is the case, the way they did it was pretty clumsy. And I'm sorry, but in what universe would Ursula Andress have to force any man to marry her? I mean, just look at her in this movie. She is absolutely breathtaking. If you enjoy science fiction that is visually stunning, you will certainly enjoy the design here and the costume design. Although you may not enjoy the cinematography so much, which I find oddly pedestrian, and I would love to see what a stylist like Mario Bava might have done with a film like this. If you love the styles of the 1960s, this film has all you could want, and I would highly recommend it on that score alone. If you want to see Ursula Andress and Marcello Mastroianni at their most beautiful, uh, they are staggeringly attractive as a couple in this movie. It's got something for everyone. The Tenth Victim really does seem to prefigure reality TV, and it can also be seen as an influence on films like The Running Man and also very clearly in Austin Powers, uh, which takes the name of Ming-Ti as Austin's band, 
um, and also steals the device of Ursula Andress's um, bra gun. The Tenth Victim is an interesting and influential kind of film, which seems to be paradoxically light and dark, superficial and deep all at the same time. It's certainly a film that you can enjoy on a few different levels. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.